Another movie review, folks, and I am wearing my Modesto Junior College t-shirt today, which ties into the movie that we are going to review. That's right, Modesto. Who's from Modesto? George Lucas. I believe he went to Briar or Downey High School. I'm not sure. Comment down below if you're from the Modesto area or you just know that trivia. And I live near Modesto. I'm about 30 minutes north maybe 25 minutes north of Modesto here in the Central Valley. I have four boys, nine and under, and they've been wanting to watch Star Wars. We were visiting my parents a couple of weeks ago and Empire Strikes Back was on TV. And so I said, we're gonna start the whole trilogy from the beginning and we're going to watch the pure and un unadulterated VHS release. This particular copy is from 1992. And I picked this up at a thrift shop. Uh, it's the Trilogy box set. I bought it for 10 bucks last year. And I also have another 1995 THX remastered box set. That was mine since childhood, but I wanted to check these ones out because these don't have any special enhancements or refurbishment. So I'll just set that here off camera as a reference. I grew up watching Star Wars video rental copy there was a place up the street from my parents house in anaheim called big a video on state college boulevard and they would have like those rental copies where they would take the cardboard box slit it open and then slide this into a plastic clamshell case as the rental box and we would rent that copy multiple times and i loved these movies growing up so i was excited to impart these movies on the younger generation 1977 it is the year my dad graduated from high school and him and my mom i believe they saw it at a drive-in theater called the catella drive-in in anaheim so i've been seeing this movie since the early 90s on vhs and then when they did the re-releases in 97 or 98 i can't remember the specifics George Lucas added all the enhanced stuff, and to me, it just doesn't hold up. So I wanted to watch the originals. And you can see why, because some of the camera shots of this film, the not retouched version, they're kind of soft and out of focus. And then like you see the hovercraft that he drives or this cruiser or whatever that Luke drives and they'd use like Vaseline or something on the negative and you can see it and it looks really bad. So I see the tie-ins from this movie where they kind of pulled some stuff from THX 1138, which came out five years before this, I believe in 1971. There's some scenes like Death Star sequences where they kind of overlap some of the booting up of the laser from THX 1138. I haven't seen that movie in years, but just off the top of my head, I could remember that. And I have thoughts. I just, I used to, Star Wars, this, the first movie has never been my favorite first and foremost. I would probably say, which maybe we'll talk about those. I like Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi better. But you know, since this is the one that kind of started off the whole franchise, we're starting here. Maybe we'll do individual ones on the other ones as well. I'm not sure. I am going to give this movie three out of five. It's okay for me, but to me, this movie is like, obviously it only, it had an $11 million budget, but it grossed three hundred seven hundred and seventy five million. So it was like a really big deal. And like, yeah, it's like a lot more advanced than let's say Star Trek was or whatever, some of the sci-fi stuff of the era. It was pretty, pretty intense for the time. But like, I watch it now with fresh eyes and I see my kids, they lost interest after the first 30 minutes. They were just kind of like, this is long and boring. And they walked away and I ended up watching the rest of it by myself. So did it capture a young audience? It did not. I still like the original special effects, but some of the acting just kind of seems like Alec Guinness and like Han Solo, the um, Harrison Ford, they just kind of seem like kind of like whatever about it. I don't know. More so Alec Guinness because he's like this Academy Award winning actor. And I feel like maybe he lowered his standard in his mind to be in this movie. And I think I even read somewhere that he regretted being in this movie, even though it's like a cultural touchstone and... People forget him in other movies like The Lady Killers or 
Bridge Over the River Kwai or maybe even Dr. Zhivago where I think that he would in his own mind like, well, these are so much better acting roles and now I'm just kind of like this bit part in Star Wars and I just don't think he cared as much. And to me, it showed in the acting in this movie in some scenes. Uh, 8.6 out of 10 IMBD, 93% Rotten Tomato, Tomato score. So people are pretty high. Obviously, people live and die for Star Wars. I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. I enjoy it, but I'm not going to have like Star Wars bedsheets in my house. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like. I I feel like this is cool for what it was, right? They were doing all the real special effects with no CGI. They're making all these models. They're creating this whole world. Lucas was really good at creating this whole world. But I don't know. I just, um, to me, this is just okay. I'm watching Empire Strikes Back right now. And that is a superior film. You can see the budget quality improved, the production quality improved. Um, I don't know. Comment down below. Tell me what you think. I'm sorry if I offend you that I'm not going four out of five or five out of five. But to me, this is just a B movie. It's good, but it's not great. Do I enjoy it? Yes. Is it my favorite film of all time? Is it a Kubrick? No. Is it a Scorsese? No. It's like something like Shawshank Redemption where it comes on TV all the time and you've seen it a million times, but you'll stop and you'll watch a few minutes of it in between your daily tasks. It's like a background noise movie for me at this point where it's just like, it is what it is. It's not like this life-changing movie. Like, I think that there's movies that you see where you're like, this movie changed my life. Like for me, like the movie Taxi Driver, Martin Scorsese came out two years before that, 1975. To me, that movie's like a life-changing movie or maybe even another one from him, Raging Bull, where you're just like, wow. Or, you know, Clockwork Orange, you're just like Stanley Kubrick. You're like, wow, that was heavy duty. And then you just contemplate it for days. Star Wars, you pull it out of the video library every couple of years. Maybe you'll watch it. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. And I'm sure you guys that are passionate about Star Wars are going to tear me up down in the comments. And please do. I want to know what you guys think. Am I, am, am I off base here? What am I missing? That's That's what I'm getting at. Until next time, we'll see you then. Oh, lastly, and I have always said in these reviews, this is just my opinion, right? It might be your favorite movie, and that's fine too. Everybody agree to disagree. So we're very open-minded here on the video review channel and open to critiques. We're not snooty like a lot of those newspaper professional movie review people. That's all. This time for real.